it was a struggle to go through high school anyway. So after high school, I realized there was no way I'm going to college. And I, looking back, I realized that I had challenges accessing books and a lot of uh, young people outside there, they were having the same challenge. So what I did, Kelvin Guma. I've been uh, uh, working with the library since 2012 when I left school. I left school in 2010, but uh, I had no privilege to attend the university or college, that is, because um, it was a struggle to go through high school anyway. So after high school, I realized there was no way I'm going to college. And I, looking back, I realized that. I had challenges accessing books and a lot of uh, young people outside there, they were having the same challenge. So what I did, I took the advantage of uh, the books we had then. And I used to go to school very early in the morning, primary school that is, one specific school, just to read with the students. And if they have a, a problem, they would want me to talk to me about, they would then, and we'll solve it together. Uh, the teachers uh, grew fond of me over time because initially they didn't know I was coming to school, but later they realized that the kids had really improved uh, in terms of uh, attitude development and behavior change. And that year the school performed really well. So that's how my story started with libraries. I'm very passionate about reading and enabling young people or any other person who is in need of uh, reading material um, access the books or have a space where they can just come and read or indulge in books. Okay, so the library, is it like uh, are you the one who started the library from scratch to where it is now or is it a partnership with other organizations? No, it's, I didn't start the library. Of course, I started going to schools before I came to Saide. Saide was a community-based organization run by women, but uh, the library was an initiative of the, the, the CBO. When we started the library, we didn't have books, and uh, the director of the CBO decided that we are going to use the books from um, her home the ones that the daughter was using when she was in school. That's how uh, I managed to uh, develop a program around reading and uh, enable other the sponsors to come on board, to bring us books, to bring us eBooks, and also to get a space where rented space for reading. Okay. So your library is for everybody, or is it? Do you have a specific kind of uh, people that you prefer to come to the library? It's for everybody. Okay. What is your take on the reading culture in Kenya? If you ask me that question two months ago, I would say Kenyans read junk, but today. I feel enlightened and uh, I can say with confidence, despite the fact that we read a lot of uh, social media, um, uh, what is the content on social media platforms, it is still reading. Whether it is junk, it is still somehow reading because if it was not reading, then um, uh, I am not so sure if we will, we will have the so-called social media because at the end of the day, a message is passed and at the end of the day, uh, people pick uh, uh, a few nuggets of wisdom here and there. So um, to me, uh, reading culture in Kenya, yes, it is really poor. But again, at the end of the day, we have to appreciate the fact that uh, people are reading. Because if you look at the numbers of uh, 
people who are subscribing to, for instance, Facebook, uh, WhatsApp, it's a lot. And look at their status, their status. Even if they just went and copied it and pasted on their status, it means they had to read and understand whatever they're copying and pasting before they did that. So at the end of the day, I believe we just need to find a way uh, to enhance, to, to, have, to pro provide reading materials and uh, probably talk about uh, reading with passion, especially those of us who are in this field by um, coming up with things like book clubs, book clubs whereby we can discuss with uh, young people uh, the importance of reading one. Second, uh, how to access these books and why it is really important for this generation to read. Yes. I mean, we need to have several book clubs so that we can uh, engage more people in reading activities. So what is, the, uh, what is the procedure of starting a book club for somebody who maybe may have an interest in starting one in the name of uh, improving the reading culture in Kenya? I think the most important thing uh, when starting a book club is you yourself, you have to be a reader. You have to understand the content of, uh, the, content of the book you are providing to your colleagues. And before you even share the contents, you could do a, what we call a, an over a review of the book, a short review, and just send this, these guys and let them read. Get a copy of the book, uh, give each and every participant of the book club so that they can read, and uh, set compression questions uh, for, for your kids, that is. But for adults, you don't set compression questions. You discuss the themes, you discuss the um, the possible lessons learned from the, the book. You discuss together, you come up with those things together when you're adults. But again, for kids, you have to set compression questions to guide you after reading. You will come to my house to pick a book. And initially they didn't read. They'll be sitting there and they see a catchy title on their shelf. And they say, oh, Kevo, can I go with that? Yes, uh, at some point I started being mean with my books, but uh, again, I realized if I become mean, these guys will never develop an interest in reading. So despite the fact uh, books are expensive, uh, I feel it's important to always share the books to whoever sees that and uh, if they develop an interest in it, yeah. It's another help. And of course, uh, with the libraries such as Kenya Library, uh, Library Service, where we have a lot of programs uh, tailored towards uh, encouraging young people and adults to read. Yes.